close. I think of this as a lesson, a lesson for telling exactly how to stop smoking. It happened to me in Africa many, many years ago. It's very simple. All you need is the, the uh, sense of self-discipline, a real meaning to doing it, eight elephants, sorry, eight alligators, 14 hippopotamuses, and an imaginary esophagus. This happened to me when I was offered a trip. I was living in Bangkok, and I was offered a trip to go to Africa by some airline. They told me to write whatever stories I wanted to write. That was fine with me. So I hitchhiked down to Rwanda from Kampala, from Uganda, where I was, and decided, because I always would take LSD, I take acid, once a year at exactly the right place. And I thought this place would be the origin of the Nile, Murchison Falls in Uganda, in extreme western Uganda, a very remote place. As I was hitchhiking up from Rwanda, um, a guy picked me up, a young guy, a Bantu guy, and he'd been with the 4-H club in America. And I thought, well, he, this is the guy to come with me when I go by the falls, by this little, by this raft which they had for tourists. And I said to him, when you were in America, did you ever take drugs? He said, no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm a Christian. I, I don't take drugs. I said, that's fine. Can you do me a favor? Would you like to come up and I'm going to take a drug which is pretty damn powerful. And if I want to jump into the water, please say, Harry, you're on acid, you can't jump. He said, what is acid? And I said, yeah, it's, 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 it's a pill, don't worry. He said, okay, sure, why not? We got there, we took a little hotel room, and the next morning I took my tab at about six in the morning, figuring it would be just in time for the eight o'clock little <laughs> raft bar, actually it's sort of a barge, and there were about 20 or 30 tourists on it. It would go down the falls, and the falls by the water we had hippopotamuses later, which were shot by Idi Amin. He killed all of them. Alligators, crocodiles, alligators, crocodiles. whatever. Crocodiles. <laughs> and they were all around there. There were a couple of monkeys which were there. It was the most extraordinary sight because this was the origin of the Nile, which David Livingston never got to. And I heard the water, and I was in my own trip. And the following took place, and now we're back to this. I'd always been smoking cigarettes. I'd smoked since I was a prison prison in Turkey. And in the Bangkok Post, there was always the picture in my column with me with a cigarette. Cigarette never felt like giving it up. And I took a drag, and I sat on the stern of this barge. And the reality was hippopotamuses, hippopotami, and crocodile, alligators, and the sound of the falls. That was the reality. And inside me, I saw that fucking smoke turning my esophagus and my lungs and my stomach and every single part of my body into grayness, into ash, into coal, into cinders. And I looked up and I saw my friend there and I said, hey man, I'm not going to be able, I can't smoke anymore. He said, well, what do you mean? What's happening to you? I said, don't worry about it. This is wonderful. And it was wonderful. Now, a couple of things happened. I knew that I'd never be able to, and I never have been in the past 30 years. The next thing, I was uh, at the typewriter with a cup of coffee without the cigarette. I couldn't write, and then I began to write. Then I was at a cocktail party in Nairobi or somewhere, and a glass of awful whiskey in my hand without the cigarette. I couldn't drink, and then I began to drink. And I realized at that time, things were, this was an extraordinary thing which had happened to me. Well, before I get to the Abacho, to the real elephants, when I came back one, one to Bangkok, the Seventh-day Adventists were there and they were giving lectures on how to stop smoking, and I wrote to them in a very little note, and I gave it a very small, terse summary of what had happened, and I said, I realize that you people, you know, don't want to tell people to go to Africa and take acid and give up smoking that way. It might be a little bit above your pay scale. <laughs> but they instead, they crossed out the note, they had somebody deliver it to my apartment, which was near the hotel they were at, saying, we do not use drugs. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> but what happened after that was really, truly wonderful. The, the kid who was with me, who enjoyed this thoroughly, he got off, I thanked him thoroughly, gave him, you know, my name and address and everything. He took his car, he took off, and I was still in that, as you well know from acid, coming in and out, and I was in it, and there was a path between the river, the Nile, and the little hotel, the sort of resort, 
resident of the Aga Khan had built this little thing. Path, do not enter elephant crossing. So obviously I walked in and I walked in for about half a mile still in that haze and how did I get out of that haze? Because I passed a corner and there was a mother elephant and her baby elephant standing there and the mother elephant looked at me like that. Well I came out of that passage trip very very quickly and I said to myself I'm going to stand here. If I turn around, that's movement. If I go forward, that is really dumb. And I stood there, and the mother looked at me, and the baby looked at me, and the, this is what happened. I was half in, half out of the acid haze. The baby elephant simply moved a millimeter closer, so she was standing, he was standing next to his mother. She looked at me every 10 seconds, <coughs> He kept feeding, and when she looked at me and looked and was very angry, he moved closer to her, and then she put her trunk, and she put her trunk over his or her head, looked at me again, realized I was no threat, and kept eating. And I turned around slowly, and I went back. And there in one day, with one small tab, I had learned never to smoke again, thank God for that, and I learned the apotheosis, the halcyon, the true love of mother for child. Thank you very much.